a Welsh poet, included in the evening. And uh, Rhian Edwards um, performed here at the Poetry Cafe the last time that uh, Aaron Thomas was here with us. Uh, we did a show uh, in the Christmas of 2007 called Seasonal Crackers. So uh, would you please give a big hand for Rhian Edwards. She's in the room. There you are, you're all hiding. Okay, I'm the token one. You're a shame. You are. You've been named in shame now. You're just clutching at straws now. <laughs> um, I, I have the faintest suggestion of a Welsh accent left. And um, the first poem I'm going to do is The Welshman Who Couldn't Sing. And um, in Wales, you're pretty much weaned on Undermilk Wood and A Child's Christmas in Wales. It's sort of like the book of fairy tales, you know. And, um, and in Undermilk Wood, you've got dye bread, you see. And does everyone, does everyone know about the whole David dye thing? Where they abbreviate David to dye, and they put after the name either an occupation or a kind of um, personality trait. So you'd have, like, dye bread, and I knew one called dye bar, I knew one called, called dye twice, because he was called David Davis. <laughs> and um, and there was and the one that kind of ins inspired line in this poem was a die gypsy dog, which I just thought was brilliant, and that was because he was had such thin legs, you know. So anyway, you'll find you'll find that sort of some, somehow in the poem. It's called the Welshman that couldn't sing. It's about my father. I'm sketching his sound. A motorbike's rumble or the cartoon voice of an elderly sheepdog. The Welshman who couldn't sing, who could massacre a funeral hymn with a throat full of catarrh and a hiccup spit of words, a never-ending baffle to the women of his making. I'm scratching off a smile on a weather-battered face. His brillo-padded cheeks could scour the skin off my pecking lips and a yellow-toothed snigger that could thaw me to tears. I'm mimicking his canon now, and food was his bible. With lamb chop in his clutches, he purred with every gnaw. His podgy pygmy fingers, dripping thick with minted gravy, would wriggle in the supper air as if knitting a potent sentence. I'm fattening up his bones, to a torso like a turnip. A hill of hairless belly, I climbed and conquered as a baby and a spooned out pit of navel that could house an old tenpenny. I'm giving back his limbs, two arms wooden to the hip, sleeves of freckles to the knuckle, fingers curled in threatless fists. His gypsy dog's thin legs marched with the scurries of an unleashed toddler, forever it seems betraying the weight he was made to haul. This is, I think it sounds, it doesn't matter, you can hear me, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is that better? I don't know where it's going. I don't want to be too loud. This is called Later Than Lan, or is it doing feedbacky things? No. Jo are you sure? Yeah, we just did some feedback. Yeah. Stand back a little time. Okay. That's better. I feel like I'm in the concert at school now. <laughs> <laughs> Later than long. Herons, mussel pools, gulls and pipers encircle our house on stilts, high among beaks and palavas of birds. Cormorants scud and gulls glide in my memory. The stones washed by the tide, which I would turn looking for blue and white or floral pieces of china for our crockery houses and the fish my mother would catch and throw back into the swirling waters of the estuary all around us. I remember them well. And high tide covering our back garden through a hole in the stone wall which embraced our home. The tide carrying our makeshift boats on its back, pieces of lumber, an old sink bath. And I can still recall the envy I felt when they bought my brother a boat called the Cuckoo. The names come tumbling back and I remember the hole in the wall was grandly called by all the harbour. 
And who could forget sliding down the mud banks at low tide into the rivulets left by the receding water, or running along the cliff walk and stirring up a din outside the shed that was my father's writing den? The memories race back, and the thrill of peeping through the keyhole, I was always the most naughty, to see my father writing his poems about gulls, hills, and cormorants on estuaries, which he saw through his wide vista window, as he sat bent writing in crab letters, pressing against the hard surface of the kitchen table that was his desk. We were poor those days, though I can't remember being poor in Larne, in those balmy, never-to-be-forgotten days, green and golden. Herons, gulls and pipers still encircle our house on stilts, and the cormorants still scud and glide in my memory. The last time I saw um, Ronwy, I always knew her as a Ronwy, I didn't know she was known as a Ron. Which is, what was her most... Ronwy. It was, that was her most common name. Like, That's it? what she calls herself in the book, Iron. Is it? Yeah. Oh, right. I was, uh, only ever knew as a Ronwy. <coughs> and um, it was at the Dylan Thomas Centre, and I was in a play about Dorothy Parker, playing Dorothy Parker. And um, she came up to me afterwards and said I wasn't doing what alcoholics do. <laughs> and uh, so she taught me, because basically what you do is, because I kept on going to the bar in the play, you see, and topping up my drink, and she would know you basically pour yourself a very tall glass and keep sipping it, you know. So I'm going to do um, a Dorothy Parker poem in memory of her. I've forgotten its title, it doesn't matter. I'll try, I'll attempt to do it in the voice of Dorothy Parker as well. I do not like my state of mind. I'm bitter, querulous, unkind. I hate my legs, I hate my hands. I do not yearn for lovelier lands. I dread the dawn's recurrent light. I hate to go to bed at night. I snoot at simple, earnest folk. I cannot take the gentlest joke. I find no peace in paint or type. My world is but a lot of tripe. I'm disillusioned, empty-breasted, for what I think I'll be arrested. I am not sick. I am not well. My quantum dreams are shot to hell. My soul is crushed, my spirit sore. I do not like me anymore. I cavil, quarrel, grumble, grouse. I ponder on the narrow house. I shudder at the thought of men. I'm due to fall in love again. Hmm. Brian Edwards. Yes. Brian Edwards.